Hi everyone, thank you for stopping into my channel. Um, today I just want to talk a little bit about homeschooling or teaching um, United States history for high school. Um, this year I have probably been the most conflicted about teaching United States history and that is only due to the fact that I have taught it so many years okay so many of you know that I've been homeschooling for almost 26 years it would be 26 years in July um, and I've taught it from the time that you know they started kindergarten on up to now which is just my 10th grader so I wanted to actually make history a little bit more interactive a little bit more fun not just dry and boring textbook work um, so I've been struggling um, this year for his 10th grade year about how to go about doing that. Now with my son, my oldest son, um, what I did with him was uh, lots of different things. Um, again, I'm, a, I'm eclectic by nature. So I pulled different resources and different online resources, re resources I had the li in the library to use with him. And we really enjoyed this. But Israel, my youngest, is a little bit different. So remember, every child is different and learn differently. What may work for one child may not work for another. So then you have to go through and adjust um, the curriculum or, or what you've done or, or what you, you're doing, adjust that for them. And that's exactly what I had to do with Israel. So I found that Israel really liked storybook kinds of material. And when I say storybook, not like, you know, um, really, really simple kind of things. But when they were little, what I did was... I used at that time with them the story of the world and I will talk about that in another video but I used that with them and I would read it out loud of course I had all my kids um, you know with me from different and they were all different grade levels so whatever I could combine um, I did do that and history was one of those so I would act it out I would read it I would do voices voices I did all of that so now that Israel's alone history is not as fun because it's just him. So I really had to get creative and think about how to teach this. And that brought in some conflict um, of textbook style, the way I used to teach it, and what he needed. So I wound up, and I'm still in this process, even though we're almost at the close of our school year, I wound up choosing, uh, let's see, let's see, uh, a History of Us by Joy Hakem or Hakem. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. And what I like about these textbooks is, first of all, it's not huge. It's not one big giant textbook. They are broken down into 10 books. And I got these off of Amazon for about $20. Every single one in a vault, the whole thing, $20. I could not believe it. So I had to get it even if I decided not to use it. It needed to be in my library. But I got them. And when I got them, I looked through and I had already done some research. And I really like how she spoke. I really like that all of the, the main kind of words or important words were in bold letters. You can see that. They're in bold letters. It's so hard to do this like this. Okay, there we go. And I like that the chapters were simple. But even though the chapters were simple, Israel did not take so much to it being textbook. And I didn't take so much to it being textbook. Now, maybe if I had got, this is the hardback. Maybe if I would have gotten the paperback book, it would have kind of done something psychological, you know, to us. Like, oh, it really feels good, you know. But I did not do that because I got this one at a good price. But I did like how she really spoke truth. Now, in the United States history, uh, speaking truth isn't always 
uh, what's been in other other history texts that I have looked at. Um, I've had some texts that only show people of color in chains. Um, it didn't come really from a point of view of what we uh, really brought to the table as far as American history. And I did not want my son to just always see us in chains. And this is where I began to really think about how am I going to teach this in a way to make him feel confident in himself, confident with himself, and confident in going out. So my whole goal was to build him up and not tear him down. Now, sure enough, we need to know our roots and our beginnings, but our roots and our beginnings for us were not in chains. So this is the problem that I'm having with teaching history. Now, at no other time did I have a problem with teaching world history or anything like that. It was set up a little bit different differently. Uh, but United States history have really um, made me do some soul searching and some internet searching for the truth. But I can say that Joy Hakam or Hakam, um, the history of, of us, is this right? The his, Yeah, history of us, um, really showed you know, a little bit of contribution that we had um, more than, you know, just picking cotton or anything like that. And so it brought me to the point of what else can I add to this to make history come to life or make history interesting. So I also decided to supplement uh, the history of us with America, the story of us. Now, video is always a great way to present history. And I say that because you can get a lot of good documentaries and it's mostly going to tell you the truth. And if you are one who says or question um, if that is truth, it is so easy now to do a fact check. Now, back in the days when I started, there was no fact checking, okay? But it is so simple now to do that. But yes, I supplement with this. Now I did this with my older son and he loved it. This by itself, Israel did not like it by itself, but he liked it with a combination of the textbook and they balanced each other out. Um, the America, the history of us, I got this, let's say, uh, oh my gosh, I got this about six years ago or when it first came out and I was able to get it free um, because I'm considered a teacher of my homeschool. And so I was able to get it free along with all of the helps and things and my oldest son loved it. So Israel, um, you know, he didn't take to it by, by itself, but he took to it along with this. So we are still trying to get through the United States history and wrap that up for the year. Now, let me tell you, we have not gone through every single book because I found that um, he is just not a big reader. He wants me to read aloud. He loves that I do that. He likes things to be kind of animated and acted out. So I really had to, you know, do some, some searching. And um, so what I also did was look at the table of contents in each book. So for instance, um, let's say book three is um, titled From Colonies to Country. And here's the time period, 1710 to 1791. I would actually look up that time period on the computer. I would do a search for it and then use the timeline to kind of say and pull out those things that I thought were important and necessary for him to learn. And I did that with a site called ducksters.com, D-U-C-K-S-T-E-R-S, -E 
dot com and I will link that below in the description box um I love dumpsters along with that and that's because it will show like pictures and it's kind of animated but it's also quick and easy and we can get it over and done with now I don't require Israel to remember dates and times and all that kind of stuff um because for me um it's not so important in you know general life but he does understand and realize you know centuries like the first century second third you know things like that and so um it has been both uh, a joy hmm, and also <laughs> torture to teach United States history with my son this year and like I said I never had that kind of trouble um, but I do and I think that as parents when we begin to take the education of our children um, in our own hands we now get to look and choose what they're learning. It's not about us sending them off and it's chosen for them. We have to pick that. And because we have to pick that, we want to make sure the material is right for us. Not just as a family, but right for that child. And you want to make sure, especially when it comes to history, that it's presenting truth in all forms. Now, if you didn't live in those time periods, um, there's going to be some up and down, you know, a, a little bit of truth and a little bit of false. And then actually the truth is somewhere in between. You're going to have that. But you have to be able to make this enjoyable for them and make it interactive. I've seen people do lap books for the younger and all these kinds of things. And, you know, I, I like lap books. I do that. But when you get up into the high school level, there, you know, Israel doesn't do lap books. He would kind of like say, mm, no. <laughs> so um, it was really a challenge. So you Please let me know what you are doing for high school history, um, United States history. Uh, and let's bounce some ideas off each other and let's support each other. Uh, I don't want to get into any kind of political anything or any kind of racial anything. I think everybody needs to know their beginnings and, um, and need to know their culture. But because I am... Um, in the United States and I live here, it is part of who I am. What we went through um, and what every race have gone through is a part of who they are. But how can we find more um, than the negative? Let's find some positive. So share with me what you're using for United States History High School, um, even United States history or American history middle school and even what you did for your younger. I'm going to share videos of how I taught it when they were little. So share with me um, down there uh, in the comments and um, that's all I have for you today. So I hope you enjoyed this small little tidbit of high school United States history. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.